How to create a GitLab group in Cloud BCI. Here's today's starting point. I have a Cloud BCI controller version 2.414.3.7. Also installed on this controller is the GitLab branch source plugin. Let's go ahead and verify that branch source plugin installation. We'll go to Manage Jenkins, Plugins. We'll go to Installed Plugins and search for GitLab dash and we'll see GitLab branch source plugin is currently installed. Let's go over to GitLab and check out the first repository for our GitLab group. In this case, the repository is going to be micro one. And right now, the only file in this repository is the readme.md file in the main branch. I also have a second repository called micro two. We'll look at that one in a few minutes. Now, before we get started, we need to create a couple of items inside of GitLab. Let's go over to my profile and then click on access token. That's the very first thing that we need to do. We're going to create a new personal access token. I'm going to name it CBCI dash Darren Pope. I'm going to leave the expiration date to the default. And then the scope that I need to add to this token is API. Then let's go ahead and click on create personal access token. I'm going to go ahead and copy this token and save it off to the side because we're going to need it again in a few moments. Secondly, we need to create an SSH key. So we'll click on SSH keys in the left nav. We'll add a new key. This is going to be the public key for the private key that we'll be using in a few moments. So we'll paste in the public key, verify everything is correct. We'll leave the expiration date and click on add key. Now that we've set up our personal access token and our SSH key, we need to go over into our controller and set up two different credentials. So let's go to the controller, manage Jenkins. We'll scroll to credentials. The first credential type that we need to create is for the personal access token. So we'll select GitLab personal access token. I'll paste that value in and I'm going to give it the same ID as I did over inside of GitLab and the same for the description. Secondly, we need to set up an SSH key. So we'll add credentials. We'll switch our kind to SSH username with private key. I'm going to give the ID and description to Darren dash CBCI dash SSH. The username I'm just going to set up as Darren Pope. And then for the private key, I'm going to go ahead and select the radio button and then click on add. And in this slot, I'm going to go ahead and add in the private key. This key doesn't have a passphrase, so I can just go ahead and click on create. So now over on GitLab, we've created our personal access token and our SSH key. We've created the credentials inside of our controller that are associated with both that personal access token and the SSH key. Now we need to set up our GitLab server configuration. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, System, and let's scroll down to our GitLab section. So under GitLab, there's already an item there defined by default named default. So we'll just leave that there. The server URL is fine for me because I am using gitlab.com. For the personal access token, I'll click on the drop down and select the token that we created. I also want to automatically manage the webhooks and the system hooks. So I'll go ahead and check these two boxes. I don't need to do anything for secret token or the root URL. So before we click on save, let's go ahead and click on test connection and make sure everything works as expected. I can see here that it was fine. Credentials verified for user Darren Pope. If you're setting this up and you don't get a credentials verified, you need to fix your personal access token and then come back to here until you get the message that is successful. Let's go ahead and click on save. So as a recap, we went in and set up our personal access token and an SSH key inside of GitLab. Then we went into our controller and set up two credentials, one for GitLab personal access token and one for SSH. Finally, we just set up our GitLab server configuration. Now we're ready to go ahead and set up our GitLab group. Now, the way we do that is we'll go to new item. I'm going to name my item the same as my group. So if I was to look at my GitLab group that I have for myself and go to the top level here, I can see up in the URL that my group is Darren Pope, all lowercase. So that's how I'm going to name my item name here. So I'll say Darren Pope. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and select organization folder and then click OK. Let's scroll down to projects and under projects, we'll select repository sources. And here we'll select GitLab group. What we'll see come in here is our GitLab configuration that we just set up. That's what this default is here for the server. Next up, we need to set our checkout credentials. Here, we're going to select the credential that we created for our SSH ID. For owner, I'm going to type in my group ID. In this case, it's Darren Pope. And then you can see here right underneath, it did a check. Darren Pope is a valid user. So it went out, verified I was there based on this server configuration. And it came back and said, yep, we know who you are. You're a valid user. 
Now for behaviors, we're going to leave all of the defaults. And then finally, under project recognizers, we're going to leave the default here for now. The script path is set to Jenkins file. Let's go ahead and click on save. If we take a look at the output for the GitLab group log, we can see we're checking for projects. We found the first project, Darren Pope Micro 2. The webhook was created, and then it's proposing what to do with Micro 2. Checks the branches. It checked the main branch, the only branch that was found. There was no Jenkins file there. That was our project recognizer. So it doesn't meet the criteria. We'd move down to micro one and the same thing. Inside the main branch, there's no Jenkins file found. So if we go back up into our job configuration and take a look at this, we can see that the Darren Pope group name has been expanded into what's coming back from GitLab. We can see the folder name, or that's specifically the name of the job is the folder name, Darren Pope. And the folder is empty because there were no Jenkins files found. Let's go ahead and create a Jenkins file in our micro one repository. So we'll come over here. I'm on micro one. We'll edit Jenkins file and insert in a basic pipeline. All we're doing is echoing out, hello. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll add the file, we'll commit it, and then we'll go ahead and push it. Now in a few moments, what will happen after the push is a webhook will be sent. It'll be received by the controller. And then what we should expect to see is micro one show up on our job configuration page. Now my avatar is brought in from GitLab. We can see one repository is found. It's currently struck through because it's still getting everything set up. If I continue to refresh this, what I would expect to do is see that strike through removed. And then I can click into micro one. From micro one, I can see my main branch. If I click into main and click into my job run of number one, we can see our echo hello. Now let's go ahead and create a branch off of our main branch to make some changes to our Jenkins file. So let's go back over to our console, make sure nothing's changed. I'll say git pull, everything's good there. Let's go ahead and say git checkout dash b fix dash one, two, three. Now we're not gonna make any changes to our Jenkins file yet. We're just gonna create a new branch. So let's go ahead and say git push dash dash set upstream origin fix dash one, two, three. Now at this point, if we were to go back over to GitLab, click into micro one, we can see now that fix one, two, three is listed here. We're ready for a merge request. We're not gonna do that yet. We can verify this, that we see main and fix one, two, three. So everything's set up the way we expect it to. Let's go back over to our job, click on the Darren Pope micro one in our breadcrumb. And what we should see here in a few moments after we receive the webhook is we should see our fix one, two, three branch show up. If we click into fix one, two, three, we can see the job is running. And then finally here at the end, we see our echo hello. So we created a new branch, pushed it up to the repository. The webhook was received. And then we see the second job show up for fix dash one, two, three. Now let's go ahead and make a change to the Jenkins file in fix one, two, three. So we'll edit our Jenkins file. We're gonna add in two new stages. The first stage that we're adding is for the fix branch. So when the branch begins with fix dash, then it's just going to cat out the readme file. The second stage that we're adding is for the merge request. So when the branch begins with mr dash, then that means this stage will run. So we're adding two new stages, a stage for when the branch begins with fix dash and a stage for when branch begins with mr dash. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll add it, we'll commit it, and we will go ahead and push it. Now, much like the other Git pushes that we did, it goes up to GitLab. We're waiting on the webhook to come into the controller, which should then fire off the job run for fix-123. Let's see what happens. We can see here now that in fix-123, we have build number two running. Let's go into how it's running. We see our hello because that didn't change. We added in the second stage, which was to cat out the readme if we're on a fix dash, which we are. So we see the contents of the readme. And then for the third stage, we're skipping it because fix dash is not the same as MR dash. So we just skip that third stage completely. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and submit that merge request. So let's go back over to GitLab. We'll click on create merge request. We're gonna leave all of the defaults. I'm going to click on create merge request. Now at this point, I don't want to actually approve or merge yet. Let's go back over to our controller and see how things change at this point. So if we go ahead and click on the micro one job, what we're going to see is that we now have a merge request. We can see that it's merge request nine. If we go into it, we can see that number one is running. If we take a look at the output, we're gonna see our hello because that's consistent no matter which branch or which merge request that we're on. We're skipping the second stage, which was the branch win fix dash. So since MR dash is not fix dash, this stage is skipped. But then we get into the third stage where the merge request is MR dash. And then we see the output for these only run for the merge requests. So now we have our merge request in place. 
We still see our fix one, two, three branch. It's still in place because all we've done is submitted the merge request, but we actually haven't merged it yet. So let's go do that. Let's go ahead and go back over to GitLab. Let's click on merge. The merge completed. Now let's go back over to our controller and see what happens now. Previously, we still had main fix one, two, three and a merge request MR9. Once the webhook is received, we can see that the MR9 is struck through. If we go back over to branches, we'll see that fix 123 has also been struck through. So that means these jobs, the MR9 and the fix 123 jobs are ready to be deleted from within the micro one job. If we were to take a look now at main and take a look at the output of number two, what we're going to see is our hello. And then that we see that we skip both the second stage where we're checking for a fix dash. And we also skip the third stage, which was MR dash. So now at this point, all of our changes that existed over in fix one, two, three have been successfully merged into main and all of the other jobs related to those branches are in the process of being deleted. Now let's go on over to our micro two repository. So we'll go back to GitLab, we'll click on micro one and I'll just switch out micro one to micro two. What we can see here is micro two looks very much like the initial micro one, it just has a readme nothing else. Let's go ahead and create a Jenkins file for this repository, but we're going to name it a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and go here. Let's go ahead and name it VI Jenkins file dash M2. We're going to paste in here effectively the same as what we've seen before, except we're putting in a specific text here. Hello from Jenkins file dash M2. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll add it. We'll commit it. And let's go ahead and push it. Now think back to how we have this job configured. We'll go back here, go back to Darren Pope, which is the root of the configuration. We'll go to configure. Right now, the only project recognizer that we're aware of is Jenkins file. We don't know anything about a Jenkins file dash M2. Let's go ahead and click on add pipeline Jenkins file and add in Jenkins file dash M2. Let's go ahead and click on save. As we clicked on save, it's going to go through and scan all of the repositories associated with this group. We're checking micro two first. It's checking for Jenkins file. Didn't find anything. Went on to check to see if there are any others. It did find a Jenkins file M2. So it met that criteria. And then for micro one, it found Jenkins file. So now when we go back and take a look at the group, what we see is an entry for micro one and for micro two. If we go into micro two, what we're going to see is main is fine. If we take a look at the run for Number one in main, we'll see our output hello from Jenkins file M2. That was the echo that we had in the Jenkins file. Now let's add in a different Jenkins file. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to our console. What we're going to do is we're going to copy our Jenkins file dash M2 and just copy it to Jenkins file, no extension. Let's edit that Jenkins file and let's get rid of the dash M2 on the end of this echo. Let's go ahead and add this file as a new file. We'll commit it and we'll go ahead and push it. Now, if you think about it for a moment, what we did is we just created a Jenkins file, push it to the repository, but how would the job know how to use it? Well, if we were to take a look at our micro two run for our job, so we've committed a file, we take a look at micro two and we go into main, we can see here that number two has started up, but the output of number two still says M2. Why is that? The reason why is that we've not made any changes to let the job know that the Jenkins file is now there. So the way that we can do that easily without making any changes, we'll go back to the root level group and we'll click on scan GitLab group now. What we'll see from that as it's scanning, it's re-scanning micro two and it finds a Jenkins file. Think about the order that we had the project recognizers. We had a Jenkins file and then a Jenkins file dash M2. Since we had not done the scan again, then it still kept the Jenkins-M2 in place. But now that we're doing the rescan, it found everything. If we go back into our job again, take a look at micro M2, go to main. If we were to click on build now, then what we expect to see is the output from the Jenkins file and not the Jenkins file M2. So we'll take a look at the output of three. What we'll see here is hello from Jenkins file. Let's go ahead and reconfigure the job to understand this ordering difference. So we'll go back up to Darren Pope. We'll configure. Let's go down to our project recognizers and let's just drag this around to where now we're checking for dash M2 before we check for just Jenkins file. Let's go ahead and click on save. When we click on save, the scan will automatically start. We'll notice here with micro two that it's going to find M2 first and then it moves on and it goes on down to M1. It doesn't find an M2 
in the micro one, but if we're going down to main, it finds Jenkins file. So if we were to go back over to our micro two and take a look at the output of this run, we'll click on build now, the output of four shows us again back to the dash M2 output. But what if we have a number of repositories within our group that all need to use the exact same Jenkins file? We don't want to maintain that Jenkins file in every one of our repositories. Cloud BCI has a feature called marker files to simplify this process. Let's go ahead and go back to our micro one repository. What we're going to do is we are going to remove the Jenkins file from micro one. We're also going to create a file called micro dash basic. If we do a git add and then a git commit, what we'll see is we created our micro basic and we deleted our Jenkins file. And let's go ahead and do a git push. What we'll see now within our GitLab for micro one, we'll see a micro basic file and a readme. And that's it. No more Jenkins files. So if we were to go ahead and rescan this GitLab group, what we're going to see in the log is it's going to check micro two. Nothing has changed there. But when we get down to micro one, what we're going to see is micro one is found, but it doesn't find any of the Jenkins files, whether it's a Jenkins file dash M2 or a Jenkins file. So if we take a look here again at the top, all we see is just the micro two. Let's go ahead and go into the configuration for our job. We're going to go down to our project recognizers. We're going to add a new project recognizer. We're going to select custom script. In this case, let's go ahead and move this to the top. So we'll have our custom script, what we're going to define in a moment, Jenkins file dash M2, and then just Jenkins file. So here, my marker file is dot micro dash basic. And then from here, I could just define a pipeline script within this block, but that sort of defeats the purpose because I want to be able to pull that in from a Git repository and maintain that in a Git repository, not within the UI of Cloud CI. So let's select pipeline script from SCM. We're going to use a Git SCM, and I already have a repository. We have a Jenkins file library, and I'm going to be using the Jenkins file basic Jenkins file to render out what I want for this case. So if I find a dot micro dash basic, it's going to go and use this Jenkins file and run this Jenkins file for that repository. So let's go ahead and finish setting up our job. We'll go down to the repository URL. I'll paste that in. Since this is a public repository, there's no need for any credentials. The branch specifier is main. And in this case, the script path is going to be Jenkins file dash basic, because that's going to be the file that I want to pull out of this repository. So let's go ahead and click on save. And again, we're going to be scanning the group one more time. Micro two, no micro basic found, but it did find a Jenkins file M2. Once it found the Jenkins file M2, micro two was done. Then we get into micro one. We're checking on branch main. We find the micro basic. It met the criteria. So now if we go back into the GitLab group, we'll see micro one is back. But if we take a look at the run for main, first off, we're going to see that we obtained Jenkins file basic from the Git repository. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we're going to see the output for both uname and Java which matches what we expected to see from our Jenkins file. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.